नमस्कार वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स नंबर थर्टी टू वेर इन द लास्ट थ्री टू फोर डिस्कोर्स वी हैव एग्जामिंड क्लेश द नेचर ऑफ क्लेश द सोर्सेस ऑफ क्लेश वेरी एलैबरेटली I hope the listeners have uh, understood the complexity of uh, the nature of klesha. In the next uh, few discourses, the speaker would like to focus on the actual sadhana that we need to undertake in our life. this yogic life now in this discourse we will examine the importance of uh, of ethical values that need to be practiced in our day to day living but before that the speaker would like to deal with uh, one or two aspects of uh, of the body and mind modern life in the world has become so complex for the modern man in all aspects climatic infectional physical emotional psychological and so on we have made this life very complex and there is no need to blame any external force here for the plight of man in the present day world there is no need to blame nature no need to blame the almighty the all powerful and there is no need to blame our fate also in fact it is criminal to do so for every kind of uh, miserable situation in the world the speaker would like to say that man is responsible if we want to lead a life of a life that is based on peace and happiness we must first look at this this mechanism this body mind mechanism if we take care of this body mind mechanism it will have its direct uh, impact on the environment and we can establish that harmony with the environment and nature therefore in all discourses 
the speaker has been repeatedly emphasizing this body-mind mechanism. directly appealing to the listeners to focus more of their attention on this body-mind mechanism. Because this is a reality. This is a visible reality. Let's not worry about that which is not known that which is beyond this body-mind. That which is invisible. But this is visible to all of us. And we all live in this body-mind mechanism. We all undergo series of experiences. Therefore, this is a reality and therefore we should focus more of our attention on this. Many diseases are related to mind, not to the body, of course body undergoes that experience what is there in the mind. The mental disturbances and emotional disturbances get manifested in the form of physical diseases. After all, we need to be healthy, that is, the fundamental aspect of our living. If we want to be happy and peaceful, we must first take care of this body and mind. What is the use of praying? If our body is diseased, if our mind is constantly troubled by various negative thoughts, and emotional, negative emotions. What is the use of meditating if our body is not perfect in order, if our mind is constantly disturbed? Health is a prerequisite, a fundamental condition essential condition for leading a higher life, a yogic life. Why many of us cannot sit for a few minutes without disturbing our body? Because of uh, the accumulation of disease in the body because of uh, the negative emotions and thoughts that we keep on entertaining endlessly. And that is why we cannot sit for a few minutes motionless without moving our body. Therefore, the speaker is focusing his attention on this prime aspect of living, and that is health. Health is a comprehensive term. It cannot be understood in its narrow sense. Many of us have this conception that health means something that is related to our body. We see the disease of the body. But many of us tend to forget that behind this, the disease that we all experience in our body, there is a mind 
that is the potential cause for the disturbance in our body. The mind is the crux. As the speaker has just now said, all our mental disturbances, emotional disturbances are the causes for the, the manifestation of, uh, of uh, diseases in the physical form. Many medical men said that 85% of the migraine or headache 50% of our stomach ulcer or peptic ulcer, 75% of our respiratory problems like bronchitis, asthma, and 60% of our um, this, um, diabetes and 75% of our hypertension or all the, the diseases related to cardiovascular, related to our heart, are emotionally induced. The brain surgery shows that many of uh, negative emotions and thoughts recorded in the thalamus and hypothalamus or the potential causes for uh, the functioning of our autonomous nervous system. This ANS is uh, the one that uh, is very important for the functioning of vital organs in our body, such as breathing. And so on. Or even the hormones, for the proper functioning of hormones, So if we have uh, good thoughts and good emotions, they in turn uh, make, make the impact on our nervous system, on our hormones, hormones. And these good thoughts and emotions would uh, um, release harmonious secretions from the glands. If we are afflicted with the negative thoughts and negative emotions, then these glands are terribly disturbed and stress happens in the whole system. Allopathic treatment will not help us. Taking tranquilizers, drugs may give temporary relief to the body. In fact, they may create uh, more toxic effects in our body. And this allopathic treatment is focused more on the disease, on the body. But these drugs and tranquilizers or medical treatment will not uh, take mind into account. So therefore, uh, we are, we become more and more diseased 
as we become more and more diseased, we are bound to suffer, undergo that pain. And if we are afflicted with all these mental and physical disturbances, how can we sit for a few minutes without moving our body? because they keep on causing us disturbances. Our body cannot sit a while if it is, say, diseased. Even if the body is, say, free from disease, our mind is constantly troubled by anxieties, fears, and negative emotions and feelings and thoughts. Then, too, we cannot sit without moving our body for a few minutes. Therefore, the speaker is emphasizing this body-mind mechanism. This biological system has its own wisdom and this wisdom needs to be paid serious attention. If we do not pay our attention to this body and mind mechanism, then any amount of practice sadhana is a futile exercise. Therefore, the speaker is focusing on this most important aspect in our living. Why are we constantly disturbed? Because of our unhygienic food habits and immoral way of living. Therefore, the speaker says, Ethical life is very important to lead a normal life that is undisturbed. I am not using the word yogic life because yogic life, the moment we use the yogic, the word yogic before life, then you may tend to think that uh, this is altogether different, this requires a different kind of discipline, and so on. And therefore, this can come only after 60 years or 70 years. Therefore, let me not go to this kind of life. So this kind of uh, attitude, thinking, may tend to happen in all of us. Therefore, the speaker is not using that word yogic before life. So he is very cautious and he is very clear about it. Let's not compartmentalize this human life into spiritual, non-spiritual, material, psychic, mental, physical and so on. But this biological system has to be treated as a single integrated whole. We need a, a holistic approach to this body-mind mechanism, not a segmentary approach, not a compartmentalized approach not looking at the body with the exclusion of mind, not looking at this, uh, this body with the exclusion of our vital emotions. This is uh, dangerous. Or oh, the speaker is of the way that we need to take this whole uh, mechanism into a single integrated system. 
or we should approach this body mind mechanism from 365 degrees not from one angle one perspective you should look at this body mind mechanism that will lead us nowhere and in fact that will complicate more that will segmentize our living that will make our personality split one a disintegrated one oh, we need to develop an integrated personality we need to evolve an integrated human being not in terms of parts and so on look at the tree how we look at the tree we don't look at the tree only from its particular part we take every part of the tree the trunk that is seen on the ground we may not see the root but we see the trunk we see the big boughs the branches the spreading branches the twigs the flowers and the fruit the leaves and the huge canopy and all that all these parts together when we see then we call it a tree we don't take a particular part of the tree and say this is tree in a similar way this body mind mechanism has to be studied so therefore health is very important aspect drugs and tranquilizers may give us temporary relief but they will not cure us the doctors may diagnose only the physical ailment but they cannot uh, diagnose our mental ailments and treating the mental ailments is in our hands you don't have to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist they will make you more mad you are the psychiatrist you are the psychologist the best psychologist is you and you are the patient and you know what is that causes you suffering what is that causes you disturbance you know it look at your life look at your living look at the way how you live in this society look at how you live with your fellow beings look at how you establish connect yourself with the environment outside every moment of your living you should take care of and this is what is known as awareness this awareness you need to cultivate at this lower level if you cultivate this sense of awareness that being aware of our body and mind every moment of our thinking every moment of our action every moment of emotion that arises at every moment of a feeling and uh, and all that then automatically that awareness uh, will lead you to a cosmic awareness automatically but how many of us are aware of uh, our own actions our own thinking process our own emotions and feelings our own uh, responses and reactions to the outside uh, um, situations and happenings how many of us are aware of our food habits the way we live 
the way we sleep, the way we act, the way we eat our food, everything, everything. In fact, uh, man is related to his uh, thinking and action. Remove this thinking and action is nothing, he is a big zero. And we cannot remind without thinking, without acting. That amounts to be a, a total uh, blockage, a total lockdown in the whole world, in the whole of our life. And that is unthinkable, unimaginable in this world and on this planet. Oh, we constantly think and act, but how we think, how, how we act, how we live in this world, that is the crux. That matters much more than what we acquire from reading books. That is knowledge. We are procuring more and more information and stuffing it in our mind. We are loading our mind with more and more information. That is one aspect of our living. In fact, that knowledge is essential to lead to a to to acquire a livelihood. As the speaker has already said, that knowledge has a functional utility. Beyond that it, it is nothing. The functional utility is that knowledge serves as a means to get you some livelihood. And of course, this knowledge is is helpful to the humanity to the extent that it can give you some comforts and luxuries. The speaker is not denying all this knowledge, but the speaker is cautioning you to see its functional utility, its limitation. And that is one aspect of our living, reading books, and acquiring knowledge is one aspect of our living that is not this, the, the total uh, uh, living that cannot sum up the totality of our life. The life is bigger than mere acquiring knowledge from books. It is vast and infinite. Living is much bigger than uh, this acquiring knowledge. We need to look at this particular point. We should realize this fundamental truth. But many of us think that knowledge is ultimate. And beyond knowledge there is nothing. Beyond this intellect there is nothing. This is absolutely wrong. We are making ourselves big fools. Now we should desist this kind of attitude. We must be freed from this kind of thinking. That acquiring knowledge is one aspect of our living. But living is not acquiring the knowledge alone. Therefore the speaker is focusing on the whole system, this whole biological system which has its own beautiful wisdom. And let us not divide this biological system into parts. 
The problem with modern man is looking at this biological system in segments. The speaker wants you to look at this biological system as a as an integrated whole. So therefore health is very important. If we are not healthy, we cannot do anything in this world. If there is a slight rise in our body temperature, can we do anything? We can't do anything. We'll be just thrown on the bed. Similarly, if there is a slight disturbance in our mind, can we focus our attention on any activity? Impossible. 